So, so, so welcome so much, Ginny. Um, welcome for doing this uh, interview with us again. Uh, I've got I've got to confess, this is the second time that Ginny has done this interview with me uh, because the first time we recorded it, it was a fabulous interview, and I deleted the file. So, so we're, we're, Ginny's just trying to think of some penance uh, for for me to do. Like, we're, unfortunately, we're not. <laughs> We're not Catholic, so I can't do Hail Marys. Uh, so, so poor old Jenny's had to come on again uh, because, like, um, like I, I'm useless. I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so sorry, Jenny. But, but it is a fantastic story and a fantastic interview. So, so for those who do not know who Jenny is, uh, she has visited and served communities at Black, Blackburn. Uh, quite really well really over the time um and and do you want to just in, introduce yourself so where are you from uh, what you do which church what you do within christ central um and uh and, and things like that is that okay yeah yeah well uh, obviously my name's Ginny. i'm from sheffield I'm born in sheffield always lived in sheffield in fact i once worked out that i've always lived within an eight mile radius of my whole life and that doesn't mean I've not been willing to go. The pair of us have been willing to go for God, but it's always like he said, stay. Um, so consequently, we've been in the same church for quite a long time as well. Um, so I'm a part of City Church Sheffield, part of Christ Central Churches. And I'm on the staff there. So in terms of how I serve on staff, it's both in terms of the prophetic um, bringing things, teaching in it, and so on, and the pastoral, working with people, um, particularly at times one-on-one -on -one when there's some really difficult needs. Hence my book, which I'm sure you'll move on to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's what I do for that. I'm also part of the uh, Jeremy Simpkins apostolic team, this Christ Central team. So. Um, that's interesting as well um, and so serve in and out of different churches in Christ Central as a result both in the UK and um, internationally usually in Canada so uh, at the moment it's not been very international but um, maybe next year Oh, yeah, we're getting nearer, aren't we, Ginny? We're getting nearer till mm -hmm. Boris lets us out, and uh, uh, yeah, so we'll pray for that. So, so and Justin lets us in. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good point. <laughs> Bless. Um, so, so you will normally see Ginny uh, in normal times. Uh, so, uh, for our church, probably on the the, the stage, it devoted uh, normally, and she really will, will really benefit from Ginny's real prophetic uh, gifting. Actually, I, I think um, God has given us a very, very precious gift in in Ginny, and, and certainly I, I feel that some of the prophecies and pictures that God has given Ginny over the years has really shaped um uh you know christ central so so it's a real privilege to have you and a real blessing uh, particularly around revival as well some wonderful pictures around revival but the, but they are other stories so so we're we're really privileged to have you it, fa 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 fantastic so the the reason i've kind of like asked you to come so over christmas um, I read uh, this wonderful uh, book that Ginny has written um, and quite a few actually of our congregation have read them as well. And actually even people outside of our congregation I've given this book to. Um, and and it, 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 there is a very powerful uh, message in it. And, and the book is called Overpowering uh, Nemo. Um, so do you want to just uh, give us an introduction uh, to, to, to Overpowering Nemo and who is Nemo and how the book came about? Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, um, the book came about because over the years I've done, as I said, pastoral work and worked with people who've had some very difficult um, pathways in life or they've had some difficult mental health issues and so on. Um, and in latter years I've been teaching on pastoral, the whole pastoral theme, not just that. But as I've done that, what I've realised is that people, um, when they listen to you speaking and speaking about how you can overcome this or that, I think what I've realised is that people listen and they want to get hold of it and 
they do believe you. It's not that they don't believe you, but there's like this gap whereby they see you speaking at the front or on a platform or whatever you, and they kind of have this inner thing of, well, it's that's where you can be, but I can never be there. There's this big gulf between you may be able to overcome, you're teaching on this and I don't disagree with it, but I will never be able to overcome because you don't know what I've gone through. And um, the more I was beginning to pick this up, um, that was that was churning around in me. But also alongside that, I think over the last few decades, I've realised that in terms of where we are as a group of churches um, in within the whole New Frontiers, uh, let's call it movement, but we used to call it family of churches. We started off um, really knowing the breaking of, in of the spirit back in the 60s, 70s, and maybe into the 80s, really having this sense of God moving, restoring the church, restoring things to the church, like baptism in, in the spirit, the spiritual gifts, prophecy, um, words of wisdom, words of healing, times of healing, and all manner of things, and including the ministry of deliverance. And then I think what's happened is over the years, we've got a bit blasé with a lot of that. And um, the whole subject of deliverance, I think, went through some, let's call it bad press, because some branches of church got hold of that in, a, in an over-the-top kind of way. You know, there's a demon behind every bush and every, everybody's problems, whatever level they are, is because there's a demon. Uh, which is obviously not what we were believing, but we did believe, and I still do believe, that the enemy can have a real strong hold on us, that sometimes we need help in that being broken. And um, so these two things were going together, and I'm thinking, I'm seeing us as a group of churches losing some of that, getting mm. just getting very, very well taught, and very aware of what the Bible says on a number of matters, and yet our experience of these things diminishing. Mm. And I thought, no, we, we mustn't lose what many of us fought for back in those early years. I mean, the whole thing of speaking in tongues, because of my desire to speak in tongues, to be filled with the Spirit and experience that, um, I was thrown out of the church that I was in at the time and then ostracized by the whole town, which you can read about in my, in my book. And obviously that doesn't happen these days. We all accept that, well, there are people that speak in tongues. And maybe I do a little bit when we're in a prayer meeting and everyone else is mumbling in tongues. But we've lost the value of what that gift is for. You know, there's so much we need to get hold of again. So all these different things were coming together in me and I just knew I had to write this book, which is based on my own story. So it's called Overpowering Nemo. Nemo was the name I gave myself at about nine and it's Latin, its meaning in Latin is nobody or no man. And, you know, I can't really tell you everything because uh, too long, you have to read the book. But basically, I came to that point of realising that's who I was, nobody. Mm. And I shouldn't be seen and I shouldn't be heard. And it's, it would be better if I wasn't here. And it became a lifelong battle with depression, suicidal feelings, the whole thing of I shouldn't be here. Um, because of abusive things that happened in childhood, it piled it on. So Overpowering Nemo is, is about how God, um, on my behalf and enabling me to overpower that, to not be running with that all the time. So that when I do teach on this stuff, hopefully people will think, yes, she does know what it's like. And if that can happen for her, then it can happen for me. That's the big thing I want to get across. And also within my story, I'm outlining, you know, just the power of these gifts that we need to get back to today. Mm -hmm. And so the subtitle is Encountering Deliverance and Walking in Freedom. 
that we can know deliverance from these strongholds on our life and we can walk free of them. We mm. can learn to walk free of them, which is a, an added thing. It's not all, all in the happening of one prayer. You know, sometimes we respond to maybe a word of knowledge or a prophetic word, maybe at the front of a meeting or maybe at devoted, we go forward to respond and we have quite an intense time with God and we assume it will all be finished in that one moment. Actually, that's where the battle to walk in our freedom begins. You know, once we've been delivered from something, then we have to walk differently. And so I outline all of this in my book. Amen. Amen. So, so Ginny, it, like, obviously I've read it and we, and we have talked a little bit before. Uh, and I think particularly to, to our family of churches, but the church in large, I think this is one of the most important messages um, that uh, you uh, and I, I've talked to Martin Dunsford we had a, Martin Dunsford a few weeks about that we really in some sense stand on uh, the victories that your generation um, made and and you know and fought for and and the work of the spirit and, and we can uh, you know I, I've really thought and repented we can get, can get a bit um, you know or we run alpha and we run do this so we don't but we never uh, we lose the the power of the Holy Spirit uh, to change lives, really. In, in you know, so so keep so keep shouting about this, Jenny. Definitely, it, it, you know, it, it is it, it's the presence and the power of God uh, that change lives through His Word, isn't it? And and you know, we need to see in our churches tongues and prophecies and visions and 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 you know uh, and the work of the Spirit more and more. Don't we? We we need to we need to you know because we, we take it for granted don't we 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 you know my generation um you know and and uh so so it, it's such an important message uh to us yeah so keep 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 telling people did it <laughs> you know it's important but it but it really really is um so you, you've touched i mean a, a little bit who nemo is in, in the early part of your life and the, the circumstances and obviously you can't go uh, the book goes much deeper but just if, if you just touch on you know a, a little an overview of, of of kind of like you know what, what was life like before you know knew jesus um and, and and you know where where did you know how did jesus really how did you meet jesus uh, and how did he change your life really well that's a very long story outlined in my book so i can't go into all of that but before knowing christ uh, which incidentally that happened when i was 18 um, and it was the year, oh, sorry, it was around the time when the voting age had come down to 18 from 21. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it was the year that they'd announced that, but it was the first year they'd been a major, um, what's the word, a major vote for, for Parliament, you know, the, uh, what's the word? It's gone out of my head. That when you vote for your next prime minister and yeah. so on, or your next MP, it was the major, first major time, so it was the year of my first vote. Um, but prior to, to that, as a child, I don't really recall feeling very much. It was basic survival mm -hmm. as a child, because it was, it was very abusive in just about every way. And yeah, it was a basic fight for survival. And I had two siblings younger than me, which I felt somehow I had to protect so even at a young age, I was kind of trying to look out for them and uh, and so on. It, it was almost, um, yeah, you just, you're just going by your instincts all the time to get through another day. So you don't think about your future and, and so on. You don't think, uh, this is what I'll do when I grow up. You don't have them thoughts because you don't, you can't see much further than the end of the day. But then as I got into my teen years and particularly towards leaving school, I, I started getting very, very depressed. And I kind of fell into this black depression all the time that most of the time was a suicidal thing as well. And it was just a fight really to not give in to that. But then, as I said, when I was 18, after, 
after this first vote, I, I, I'd always done exactly what I was told because there was trouble if you didn't. And my father took me to the polling booths and um, along the way he said, you'll have a scrap of paper and you'll have to put a cross against a name and this is the name that you put a cross against. And so I duly did what he said. But when I came out on the way home, I couldn't stop wondering why why I couldn't pick mm. who to put a cross against. And it was the first time in my life I'd questioned why I didn't choose anything myself mm. and why I always did as I was told. And then from that point, life didn't get any easier, but I found myself in a, a long-winded way around in a church hall one night. And I found myself hearing the gospel, which was meaningless to me. I have to say, I didn't understand it. It didn't mean a thing. But God intended me to respond. So he uh, described I described what happens in my book. He had me on my feet, despite the fact I made no clear decision to stand on my feet in response to a, an appeal. And I became a Christian that night. And then after that, life was very, very different. Mm. Obviously, I took on board things like going to church and going to Bible studies and things. And I began to really, really, really drink of, of the Bible, really, really reading it. Not because necessarily um, I was hungry, but I was gen generally a good reader anyway. So instead of reading all the books I'd been reading, I just read the Bible. Again, I didn't understand it mm. and didn't really know why we had to read it every day, except from time to time I knew God spoke to me out of it. So I was very aware of his presence, but I still didn't get free. Mm. So um, that's kind of what happened when I became a Christian. But there's a lot more to it, as you know. So, so let me encourage, so all I will say, I mean, let me encourage you to, to read the book. Um, but you, you definitely uh, did not have it easy. It, it's, you know, if, if it, 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 I, I think it's as difficult time as you could have uh, growing up, I think. Uh, I think it actually it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's gripping. I'm not... I'm, I, to, to really attribute to to when you say you survived, you you, you really did just uh, survive. It, it's it's a really yeah powerful story. Um, obviously, I mean, once you met Jesus, uh, everything in your life went perfect after that, and nothing ever went uh -huh. was difficult or went wrong because we all know that's what happens. Um, but that that no, it's not. That was the joke. But but obviously that that wasn't wasn't necessarily the case. Um, and and uh, you know, um, so 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 really, my, my next question. Is is you know we believe that the christian faith is a journey with jesus and a journey of faith you know and and uh, so there's a posh word sanctification um but but what what were some of your challenges um in that did you have in your journey of faith um once once jesus got hold of you i think my biggest challenge wasn't um stopping doing the worldly things i'd been doing nor was it starting doing the things like reading the Bible and praying. My biggest challenge was um, coming up against churches full of people who said one thing but believed another. And this is, this is what I'm frightened we're going back to now, where we all give assent to things that we believe. Mm. But is it really truly something that we believe in our hearts? So I went through things like wanting to be, um, I wanted to just do the things that God said. So we were all right whilst it was start giving to the church financially, give a portion of your, we were all right while I was doing that kind of thing. And we were even all right, even though it wasn't a Baptist church, we were still all right when I said I want to be baptised in water, which actually part of me didn't because I was very afraid of water. <laughs> but I knew I had to do it. But it was when I started to get into the things of the spirit and discovered that people were saying these things are not for today. Mm. And that's where my biggest challenge came from. 
the Christian community who underneath everything they said didn't believe that God could do these things today. Um, and as you will read in the book, it became such an issue, we were forced to move out of our hometown. The only reason we don't live in our hometown, town, six miles away, is because of all this. Mm. And, um, and then we found a church that was just on the cusp of coming into the things of the spirit. So was able to go into there and yeah, still experience some difficulties at time because I suppose in everyone else's eyes, I just seem simplistic and naive. If God said he could heal today, in my opinion, he could. And so I expected it to happen. And if God said we could speak in tongues today, I expected it to happen. And if God said, you know, I, if he says these things, then he can do these things. And I hang, hung on to that for years. And I mean, what's not in the book is the fact, well, I mentioned becoming very disabled because of what was done to me as a child. By the time I was in my early 20s, I became very, very disabled. Mm. My back, it turned out, had been broken in three places. And splinters of bone were cutting into nerves and all sorts of things, which had never been picked up. Um, and I believed that God could heal me. And I kept believing that, and I kept believing that, and I got disabled, and I ended up where I had to have some really invasive major surgery to put pins in and to take bits from my hip bone and graft it into my, my spine and have it all fused into one. And I still believed God could heal me because all that did was relieve the pain. It didn't bring my mobility back. Mm. Um, and when people, when I say to people, when I did say to people, I know that he can heal me and when he does so, I'll bend down and touch my toes. And then someone would say back to me, knowing what I had done within my back, knowing I couldn't bend anymore, would then say to me, but that's unreasonable. God doesn't do the unreasonable. How will you ever bend down and touch your toes? That's unreasonable. And these are charismatic, committed Christians. Well, they were, this is what was happening at the time. That's not, not my surroundings now. And so you can imagine their faces when one day that does happen in front of them at a conference. Amen. So, but it's like we have, to, do we really believe the gospel? Mm. Really? That the lame can walk and the blind can see and the deaf can hear and that those who are demon possessed can be set free. Mm. Do we really believe it? Or do we think somehow we've got to make some of this happen and then the rest can't happen? Mm. So sometimes, you know, people, people like me will become a Christian and join the church. And you can see how people are frantically thinking, how can we help them? Oh dear, oh dear, we've got to try and find them a way to help them. And of course we all want to help, but bottom line is if God's brought someone through to themselves, to himself, he is about doing a work to change them from one degree of glory to another and bring them into complete freedom. Amen. That's what he does, isn't it? Amen. So no, no truly born again Christian should think I cannot be free. Amen. Amen. Because that's his will and purpose for you. Amen. Amen. So, so I can't think of more dangerous individual to the kingdom of darkness and the more powerful individual in churches for the kingdom of God for, for people who simply believe what the Bible says. <laughs> Basically what you're saying, you know, it's like we, we need to believe if it says it, we need to do it, don't we? Really? Like, definitely. We need to do what we say we believe. Absolutely. That's, that's it. That's we can pray for the sick and we can see prayer after prayer after prayer seemingly unanswered and we might think oh this is a waste of time but one will be answered at some point I mean I was I prayed for, for my own healing for I think it was 13 years and other people 
other people so lovingly and so persistently prayed for me too. Mm. Why did it not happen at the first time? I don't know. Why did I have to go through that horrendous surgery before it happened? I don't know. All I can say is it's a pretty good testimony now to be able to say I can bend over with my back pinned. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but why, why? We don't know these things. You know, we can't, we can't say that we should understand everything in the things of God. But we can trust him. Yes, yes, absolutely. And we know that sometimes it seems that he's not answering some prayers, but we can still trust him. Absolutely. Amen. Amen, Jenny. Yeah. So it's, 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 it is, I, I agree with you. And, and, but what makes me fit not for, well, for in myself is fearful. It's like, sometimes am I like that? Do I, do I say I believe it, but do I believe it? Do I believe it? I hope I do. <laughs> but, I, but I know, but I know, uh, you know, uh, you know, wait, d- d- definitely. Amen. Are you listening, church? Are you listening? Yeah, are you listening? So Ginny is, is, is a power, and she's a dangerous individual who has the audacity to believe God at a word. And look what happened. <laughs> so well, I know this is all happening over the internet. Hmm. And when people in the church at Blackburn hear this, or well, you're hearing it now. <laughs> um, it's all over the internet mm. and we can't be together yet. No. Nevertheless, yes. God can work. Yes. God can Amen. heal. God can set free. Amen. God can bring deliverance. God can change our thinking. Amen. So be prepared to respond. Amen. 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 And don't give up. and if you're still having to pray for things when we can meet together get others to pray don't give up amen amen you listening well i'm talking to this amen amen it's um um I think we've covered it uh, already. I mean, guys, guys, guys at church, please, please, we, we've bought you a few copies. Um, please read Ginny's book. Please read it because it, it, not only is it powerful, um, but it's got an important message uh, for the church. Um, I, I, I think so. My, my final question is, uh, and we have touched it already. You know, um, what's what's the message that you have? I think we've said it. What's the message that you have for the churches? um i I think uh but also actually if you're part of um a a church or or you're a follower uh, of jesus and you are wrestling with uh, because you you did have real strongholds when when you became a christian didn't you you real strongholds in your life of you know and and satan doesn't unfortunately doesn't leave you alone um as you progress through life we've been walking through luke and we realize that it will continue um doing it but you have the power to defeat satan uh, mm-hmm. through the power of god um but you, what would you want to say with people struggling with mental health people struggling um, with strong goals in their lives uh, people struggling with um you know praying for healing and you know uh, or people you know what, what what would be your message from the book and churches uh, in general how we respond to this um, mm-hmm. well there's a lot of questions there, there. is i'm sorry <laughs> I think if we, if you, if there's a struggle with mental, mental well-being, and how we think, my first big thing is to say you don't have to be like that for the rest of your life. Mm. And in fact, you know, over a, over our lifetimes, most of us will have a spell where we're not so good in terms of our mental health. Mm. It's like a continuum, but we can come out of it. We can kind of walk up the hill and out of it. Um, but particularly if we're Christians, you know, God can set us free. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we do need help with that in terms of the deliverance that I set out in the book. But not always. The point is there will be some areas that have become like strongholds in our lives that the enemy has. And when we recognise what they are, and when we bring them to God and he can help help us by breaking the power of those, then we have to work on allowing our thinking to be changed. So from the point that I 
I became a Christian, I still didn't see that, you know, I still thought of myself as Nemo. I still thought I shouldn't be here, I shouldn't belong, especially when I had all this kickback from people in churches about you shouldn't this and you shouldn't that. I still thought, you know, I shouldn't be here. But when I got this deliverance, that didn't suddenly change. But I found that where the enemy had a real power over my thinking, now I realised that actually I had the power to answer him back. So I would find that I would kind of, if you like, in my inner being, hear that same taunt of, oh, who are you? you nobody's going to listen to you. You shouldn't be here and all that. I would then speak back to the enemy and say, that's a lie. I'm a child of God, you know. And sometimes it was about my belonging because obviously in my family I didn't feel I belonged. So then I would say, that's a lie. I've been adopted into God's family. Mm -hmm. I've been especially chosen. You know, I found I was, you know, you can believe that stuff in one sense, but I found I was able to speak it back. So we can be free. In terms of physical healing, well, let's start believing that we can see it happen. And I know that not everyone, 100% of our prayers for people will be answered. I know that. In the mystery of God, I don't know why. But we have to remember we're living in that in-between time from when Christ inaugurated the church to when he will come back to sort of claim it as his own. And when he comes back, we will all know what it is to be in full health. But we can have some of that breaking into our today. So let's be more expectant that, that God will do that. And when we pray for others, let's be expectant that God can mm. heal them. And be, have ask God, pray for faith that you might see this go. And in terms of church in the wider sense, yes, to come back to some of the things we've known and not let them drift away. Don't just think we've got to understand everything. Mm. You know, I mean, one of the things I quote in the book is Guy Miller, who I once heard say, apostolic doctrine has to be experienced and not just understood. Mm. You know, let's experience God together by the power of his spirit. Oh, man. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. I could, I could, I could keep you in. I should loads of questions, <laughs> but I've already done one interview with you. <laughs> so I'll so. tell you what, Church in Blackburn, you'll think of a way to make him pay for putting me through this. <laughs> oh, what you've opened now, Jenny? <laughs> I, I had to, I had to confess to him. Oh, I, go. Oh, I had to confess to you, but um, um, Jenny, I, I, I don't want to lose um this really and thank you so much there is a very very powerful message that you have uh here to us in blackburn and to the churches about we you know we need to see we want to see the power of god work uh, in our churches through healing through strongholds through deliverance um you know because god is we need to pray like everything does depend on god because it really does depend on god we've we'll been learning we've we'll been doing the persistent widow we need to pr keep praying keep praying um and definitely um i'm gonna ask you we are going to um um, gonna we're gonna pray if you you are want prayer um we, we want to pray for you whether it's for healing whether it's deliverance whether whatever we're going to go into uh on zoom a, a separate room at the end of the service and we want to pray for you we want to pray for you because what Ginny is talking about is true that god uh really has the power to to destroy strongholds of the enemy and heal and and, and all these things uh, so we're going to give you the opportunity to do that however before we do uh, Ginny, i really love you Th first of all thank you so much uh, you know it, it's such an important uh, kind of like you know message that I, I believe that you have uh, for the churches uh, definitely at this time and, 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 and certainly also certainly leaders and elders need to hear this message uh, the second or third generation very 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 important um, but, but will you pray for us uh, will you pray for us just before I let you go and, and again I've, I've held it up again but I cannot stress um, it, 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 it's, I, I read it, I think, in two sittings, and that's only because my tea were ready. 
Um, so so if, if you know if you want to get all this but we will get it to you in your hands um, and uh, and you can read it definitely and, and we'll, we'll 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 order some more as well so so we pray for us Ginny thank thank you so much um, certainly yeah father I do pray for everyone in the church at Blackburn father even over this um, recording even over the internet father you have the power to work powerfully in lives by your spirit so i pray father that you will come and visit people father i pray that where people are struggling with their mental uh, health where people are struggling to feel positive where depression is trying to engulf people i pray father that you will set them free and i speak against every every attack of the enemy and say father will you rebuke him will you remind people that they are your specially chosen child father will you remind each and every one that you have called them out you have chosen them from before the foundation of the world and you've chosen them for purpose and father i pray where people are struggling with physical health father will you touch them even now father will you touch them in their physical body mm -hmm. father we believe you can set people free from physical ailments father you said in your word that that power that was at work in christ when he was raised from the dead that a mighty power to raise him up from the grave up to you, Father. That power is at work in our physical bodies. And so, Father, I pray for that power to be at work even now in people's physical being. And, Father, I pray for those who don't even know you yet that might be listening to this. Father, I just ask that you would just speak to them. Father, show them that they too are not nobodies, but they're nobodies who you have chosen because you have purpose for them. And Father, I pray as the church moves on from here, the church in Blackburn, Father, I pray that you will light something, some touch paper among them, Father, that flows out into Blackburn, Father, affecting others' lives. Father, I thank you that you're at work because you want more disciples more fish bringing into the net through every one of us and so father i ask you now that you will bless people even in this moment bless them encourage them and strengthen them in jesus name i pray amen 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 thank thank you so much Ginny. and uh and it's been a real blessing it's uh when, when we get back to physical meeting at some point if you fancy crossing the pennines uh hopefully we'll see you in real life <laughs> um, um so and say say hello to Stuart as well so uh, as well so Stuart is Ginny's husband he, I, I have to say Stuart is a hero in this book is a hero that lad definitely so so and if you want to know what yeah, i'm talking about re read the book but um um but right I, we'll, we'll close there so so god bless god bless did bye bye, bye. <laughs>